Um, they've actually read Valuing Australia's Creative Industries this, you, this you past week. Valuing Australia's Creative Industries, every single word, every single footnote, every single Venn diagram. Uh, I salute you, I have. Uh, but um, it had a little bit to do with the, um, uh, the organisation that put that report together. So firstly, I just wanted to say, well done, congratulations. Uh, it's week two and you're all still here. You all came back, that's excellent. Um, I also wanted to say, well done on choosing this course. Um, I'm a graduate of this course. I did the Masters of Arts Management as it then was. Uh, uh, back um, a long time ago now, I think 14 years ago, I was in this exact class doing this exact subject, I think, or whatever its precursor was. Uh, and it was a really good decision. It was a, a, it was a good course to do, and I think it's had a really positive effect on my career. It gave me a really good grounding in a whole range of different disciplines. Uh, it enabled me to leverage a whole lot of things on it. Uh, and it was just a terrific experience. So I think you've chosen well. And I encourage those of you who are thinking of hanging in there for the long haul to do three years in the, three years in the Masters. If you're thinking about it, I think it's worthwhile. I think it's good. And throughout my career in the arts, certainly I've met a lot of people who have done some or all of this subject. So uh, I think you'll enjoy it. Uh, I'm here to talk about some stuff, and in fact, two pieces of stuff specifically. Uh, the first one is about defining and valuing creative industries uh, and talking a little bit about what that means. Uh, and really, that means. Uh, discussing a question which at the Creative Industries Innovation Centre where I worked for five or six years, uh, discussing a question we talked about a lot, which was what, what are these creative industry things anyway? Uh, and hopefully it'll make a little bit of sense of that report, that valuing creative industry report. Uh, the second piece of stuff that I'm going to be talking about is about approaches to analysing creative organisations. And this relates to a case study which I think you're going to complete as part of this subject. Uh, and I'm really going to talk about my experience in analysing organisations and companies, uh, particularly those which have a creative bent, and talking about the sort of skills that you might want to apply to that case study and about the kind of a few approaches that you might want to think about too. I just want to stress that a lot of you talk about this stuff, these are just my ideas. They're only it's only my opinion on these things, uh, gathered from working with these companies. Uh, take what you like from it and discard the rest. Uh, please contribute and add your ideas to mine. Uh, I'm not the um, final figure of authority on this subject and never will be. Uh, and I like these conversations to, to be about a mix of things, to be a little bit about your perspective and a little bit about my perspective and seeing what the wisdom of the crowd is. So, that's the caveat I like to say about everything. Just my, just my proposition. So, let me just quickly talk about my background for a little bit. So, uh, I was, when I did this course 15 years ago, I was running a, um, a film business, a film locations office, uh, in my hometown of Wollongong, which was Film Alora. Uh, it ran for uh, five or six years and worked a lot on TV series and feature films and TV commercials, uh, basically on locations work and liaising with uh, uh, location owners and getting projects filmed down my life in the uh, After doing that for a while, I kind of decided that I wanted to um, earn a decent wage. And so I started working as a financial analyst for the Australia Council for the Arts. And I did that for a few years, working with small to medium arts organisations right around the country, uh, looking at their finances, their budgets, their audits, and advising the um, assessors, the people who make decisions about grants, about the companies that they are thinking of supporting. And then I moved on to the Creative Industries Innovation Centre, where as a business advisor, I worked directly with creative industry companies, 
mostly for-profit companies, but a lot of not-for-profit companies as well, on how to increase their profitability and productivity. And so I guess I've seen about, I, I suppose, a couple of hundred creative industries companies up close, uh, seen how they operate, uh, seen how uh, their owners work, and basically got a sense of what makes a creative industries company different from an ordinary company. So that's one of the perspectives that I bring to this subject. Um, my other is as a playwright. So I've had a number of plays perform in Sydney and Melbourne and in venues overseas. That's a shot from one of my plays, Mandrava, which was just in Dubai of all places. I discovered a couple of weeks ago, so that was nice. Uh, and I'm a citizen of Port Kemba, which if no one has ever heard of Port Kemba, you are not alone. Uh, it is a suburb of Longlock, and until recently, we had this giant chimney stack, uh, which was this kind of remnant of the town's industrial past, but part of the old copper smelter. And um, uh, late in 2012, uh, late in 2013, early 2014, uh, some people decided to light it up. And that's kind of where I live, is in this last object. But then in last year, they blew it up. And so that's and so does stuff one. And so this is about the valuing and defining of creative industries companies. Oh, sorry, of defining the creative industry. I'd like to show you now a list of how those industries were defined by the Creative Industries Innovation Centre. And it's a little bit of an exercise in getting to know who you guys are too. But don't worry, there's no kind of terrible audience participation around it. It's all okay. So it's traditionally um, there is a basis of thought that when we're talking about the creative industry, we're talking about the arts. And certainly the visual arts and the performing arts are part of the creative industries as defined by uh, the Creative Industries Innovation Centre in Nigeria. Um, does anyone here work in the performing arts? Can you just put up your hand? No, good idea. Uh, anyone in the visual arts? No? Good idea. We can cross them about now. Uh, it also includes film and television. Anyone from film and television? Design, a lot of our work was in design in some form or another. Um, uh, what area of design are you in? Industrial. industrial design, yeah. So a lot of industrial design, a lot of web design, a lot of graphic design, a whole lot of design areas fit into that creative industries. Uh, fashion, anyone, anyone's a fashion designer or work in fashion in any way? No? Publishing, we include in the creative industries. Anyone from publishing? Architecture, any architects in the room? Marketing and comms, anyone with PR? Yeah, you're in marketing comms. And software interactive content and games. That's a lot of people going from anywhere in the creative industries, am I right? Is that right? It's okay, it's no shame in not being in the creative industry. So you're all from somewhere, some, you're working different other spaces than that. Okay. So, his first kind of question, if that's the people who are in the creative industry, so we left anyone out. Anyone think that someone else should be in the creative industries? Oh, maybe like radio music or like broadcast communication. So yeah, yeah, radio, radio music, very interesting. So film and television, as I put up there, we would actually have called its full name is film and television and music. That's film and television and radio. Uh, and in six years, I never saw a radio again. For reasons which might become clear as we go into this a little bit further. Um, but yes, radio would fit into broadcast there. Music we would fit into the performing arts in some way. Yeah. Anyone else? Let's do that. Well, why should museums be more? Why <laughs> <laughs> not? It's like, it's like, it's like, it's like, Well, um, but then I suppose they want to support people 
I'm convinced. Let's let him in. Thanks. Does anyone know what I'm in? Do I have a problem with free aid? That's free aid ministry. No one's interested. Because you've spoken first, no one dares come. <laughs> uh, museums, heritage organizations, those sort of places, in some people's definitions of the creative industries, they're in, you know, because there's no one set definition. And actually, in our work, we would have found a way. If, if they wanted our services, we would have found a way of getting them. You know, whether they're museums or galleries, we would have, you know, that's a problem. So, yeah, there's definitely an argument to make. Anyone else? Does anyone else think what else do people think might be in the creative industries that don't? Festivals, excellent, great suggestion. So the thing about festivals is they can be about so many different things. So we might let we might let the Sydney Writers Festival in. Yeah, fair enough. What about the Parks Elvis Festival? Yeah, they can come in. Lots of warmth. Yeah, okay. What about the Daniloquin Youth Muster? Yeah, sure. Sure. I'm into the culture of the youth, but I'm not there. So, what about food and wine festivals? Are they in? We don't know what. I mean, the easy answer to this question is we don't know. And, and definitions being the definition being so loose as it is, there may well be arguments for letting in festivals. Yeah, for sure. Cool. What about that thing they do in Canberra for the super pass, the, the nats, the super nats? We're going to let them in. I don't know. What. I don't know. Uh, what about cinemas? Do we let them in? Would anyone like to mount a case for letting the cinemas into the creative industry? No, we all hate the cinemas. <laughs> Kick them out. Some people would say that it's more niche cinema for that, you know, the wine, French cinema and all that. So Dendy's in, but Boyd's Right, okay. So now the, now the definition of creative industries is somehow connected with the content you exhibit. Yeah, I guess. Are in sometimes if they have the kind of the kind of art house festival in? I don't know. I don't know. Ten years I've worked in this place, I don't know. What about if you're a recruiter who works solely in the film and television industry? What if you're an accountant who does 100% of their work with musicians or visual artists? Are they in? Yeah? You will let everyone in. <laughs> Are they considered support workers? No. I mean, I mean, if they're in the industry and they live and breathe in the industry and they, and they perform services that are important to that industry, keeping going. It's not really a support service, is it? It's kind of interesting. I don't know. The, the answer I don't know, by the way, would be you'll be getting used to it now throughout the course of my presentation. The app developers. Something really dull, like measuring changes in interest rates kind of thing around the world, factoring in risk on insurance products or something. Still, you're still interested? Yeah, there's a whole section in that that factoring and the surprises Yeah, yeah, right. I mean, we, well, I'll, I'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll talk about that a little bit more. What about hairdressers? You want to let me <laughs> Yeah. Just cuts, there it is, now in the creative industry. I'm not sure. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
screen. Can I get her out? Come on, somebody's got to kick somebody out. We can't, surely we can't let the cave decorate it. What do you say? Really? We can't, they only can double up, so they put in like five people. They've got their own industry. But, oh, they've got their own industry. You're already part of an industry. You can't come and be part of it. Yeah, okay. okay, we're kicking the cave decorators out. Except, you know, they're creating something unique that gives colour and shape and form. They're craftspeople, aren't they? But they're out. Come on, we've got to be harsh ones. We can't let everyone in on this boat. Let's get some people out. What are gemstone cutters? Jewelers are in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I suppose the gemstone cutters, they, they take the raw material, they they work out what they can do with an oddly shaped piece of mineral, and they, they work out what the best kind of cut is for them. I don't know. Anyway, it's just my way of demonstrating that these are very difficult boundaries to um, to define. And that's part of the problem, that's part of the reason, reason behind trying to value and define them in that report. And I'll talk about that. So, I'm going to just quickly take you back in time a little bit to 2009 and see how we got into this mess of trying to decide whether gemstone cutters and hairdressers should be in the creative In 2009, government support for the creative industries was very different. It was focused around the arts. So, we funded the arts through the Australia Council on Arts New South. 